Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 152. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building. My God, GFT Gang is in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. What up, though? This is Dane from 313 in Detroit. Well, outside of Detroit for me now, but hey, still 313 for me. International Hype, not just a hashtag. It's a way of life. Dane threw it out there. You have to go leading down that road. Um, <laughs> this is uh part three autism awareness. This is the third situation. Like I said, when I started these, everybody's story is different, that's why we're going to get everybody's different story. Not everybody, but you get what I'm saying. Um, Dame has a unique situation, and now the floor is yours, Dame. You walk us through your story, and we will go through the episode just that way. Um, talk to us. First story is I have two autistic, two of my three kids are autistic. Um, the first one is adopted. She's my wife's great niece. She's 11 now. When we adopted her, I think she was three turning four or four turning five. Um, long, lengthy process. Um, we saw some things that wasn't quite normal child behavior. So we got her tested. Lord behold, there we have. Uh, she was on the spectrum. Um, very functional. You know, just have some different tendencies as normal kids, as you want to call it, normal how, kids. <laughs> how old was she when she got, uh, when she got, when they diagnosed her as being on the spectrum? Uh, either five or six, uh, a few months after we adopted her. Okay. Got it. Yeah, it had to be sometime, a few months down the line, we just saw some things going on with her behavior and her learning. I mean, she was a nice person, a uh, nice kid. Um, but, you know, kids have a tendencies or whatever, and some things wasn't matching up as far as behavioral and learning um, at certain age, you know, age points. One thing I want to jump right in and say is uh, I commend y'all for jumping right on that six months and you say, all right, something don't seem right. A lot of times well, we are everybody wants to think that it can't be my kids because it's my kids. Everybody think that their kid is special and that nothing can't be wrong because you try to protect your own pride and ego instead of trying to do what's best for your kid. So salute to y'all for jumping on that one. See, that's the thing. That's the problem with a lot of people. A lot of too much pride and ego, there's nothing wrong with our kid. Just because you have a spectrum, your kids on a spectrum or have something totally different doesn't mean they still can't be special. They're just special in their own little way that's different from what the normal kid is or what the traditional kid is. Um, there's a lot of people that grew up to be great individuals and contributed to society that are on the spectrum or completely autistic or something else is differently wrong with them. You know, well, not wrong, but just different with them. Um, yeah, we didn't have an ego about it. Like, it's better to get ahead of the problem if this you want to call this a problem, ahead of the situation to help the kid further themselves in a Future. It's better to get some answers so that you can you know how to you know how to handle the test once you got once you got the questions it's easier to handle this. Right. You can't you can study cheat. you can't study for a test if you never if you never went to the damn class. Right. So we got her tested. Um everything is going okay. But the problem is certain areas and certain schools they wanted to be in denial or they didn't want to help out the way they should have. They didn't want to label her as autistic. I'm doing air quotes because a lot of this is BS, the stuff that we had to go through with her. Uh, my son, who was born in 2020, they were, the uh, week the world shut down, during the pandemic, he was born. I got one of them 2020 babies too. <laughs> yep, so. They are a whole different ball game. <laughs> they are a different breed altogether. He, he's funny as ever. Um, but Around I forgot what about age two, some things wasn't adding up with him. So we got him tested, and they said he was on the spectrum because some things that he he can repeat stuff. Um, but far as just verbally 
verbal skills and um, he wasn't up to par, up to his um, age um, progression with a lot of things. Like he can talk, he can play, repeat stuff, but some things just wasn't like for his age progression. So we got him tested. Uh, he's on the spectrum with ADHD as well. So you have a hyper kid that that uh, is very special. So them twenty twenty <laughs> kids like gotta kind of they already I think is gonna be like a uh, it's gonna be like a crazy uh, thing with watching them for the rest of forever because they all got started off behind the eight ball because they had to be secluded in the house I, I, because they I, didn't get to know. They didn't get to know your whole family. They st- like my daughter. We probably didn't come back out the house. My daughter was born in January. I mean, uh, damn, January is the oldest daughter. June. It, um, she was born in June, and for like two years, we just we went. To, my mom's went to my, my in laws, and that was pretty much it. She knew like, uh, my brother's kids and my brother in law's kid. Other than that, she didn't really know nobody, and. It kind of puts them behind the eight ball because then they, you kind of kind of do the stranger danger thing with them. But then you also kind of got to get them to know that this aunt is your aunt. This cousin is your cousin. And it's kind of hard for them to understand because they're so damn little or so young still to decipher them situations. So mm-hmm. even like now in the uh, pre-K stage is like they're so excited to see each other because they never really got a chance to play with other kids. <laughs> like unless you had other little kids in the house. So yeah. they're going to be an interesting test study even without having the difficulties of dealing with this. And, and not only that, as far as him, he's already temperamental because it's autism. Some days it's good days. Some days it's bad days. Some days he want to be your friend. Some days he doesn't want to be your friend. And uh, even even with kids, it's like, no, no. But then, like, me and my wife's schedule, work schedules and school schedules is, like, so – far in between we have to have him in daycare because it's only me and my wife really ain't able to take care of him so the days when our schedules conflict we have to drop him off at daycare when we drop him off sometimes it's a good he'll just go you know straight along with the people that he sees all the time and other times it's more like no he doesn't want to go he's grabbing onto our arm and stuff like that but then we find out that after we leave he calms down. He's fine. He's playing with the other kids just fine. So it's so, it's, it's like a tug of war sometimes. How did your daughter prepare you for your son? Or was it just two totally different situations? Different situation. Um, I can't say because we've had dealing. I've personally had dealings with other people in my family and close friends of the family with autistic kids. So I already kind of see what was going on. Like I have a baby cousin. I'm not sure if she was born with autism. And they actually say, I actually read somewhere where trauma can cause autism. I'm not sure how true that is or not. Um, But a lot of things happened to her at an early age. And she didn't really progress well. But I could see little tendencies that a lot of autistic kids have as far as sensitive to noise and whatever, lights, smell. Um, sense of touch, like foods. They don't like certain foods because the texture of it. Um, so far as my son and daughter, I I don't think there's really anything that can help me prepare for him. Because every kid is different. Because, you right. know, to calm one kid down, it take in one and what to spark or it might be um, them to flip out on you. It's totally, totally random sometimes. The only thing that I would think that could have, like, uh, even, because like you said, even with nothing going on with the kid, two ki- one kid ain't the same as the other. Uh, but the, the, the patience that it takes to deal with these situations, the amount of, all right, I've just got to find a way to deal with it. I got to, I got to understand that this is what it's going to be for the next two hours. Like it takes a whole lot of that. And especially when they're that little, when they already in a, in a regular circumstance, they already wouldn't be able to completely formulate and tell you what the hell is going on or why they're 
upset or whatever without it just being like, stop whining, stop whining. <laughs> and I know that this has to be, that has to be a totally different situation. It, it is because our temperament with my oldest daughter is very different from our youngest son. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe because she's older. She should know. I don't know. This is one of those things that we were surprised when we had her um, her diagnosis because it's more of a um, the state should do something better type deal. It's not resentment toward her. It's just like frustrating with her situation because it seemed like my son is getting more help with his situation versus my daughter. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Um, just it baffles me sometimes um, with how people are treated. And my son probably does get a little bit more fair, a uh, little bit more of an advantage because he's younger. And my daughter's 11, he's four. Um, so he gets a little bit more special treatment, I guess, because of that. Um, that's crazy. My kids are the exact same age. <laughs> oh, and, damn! And, and man, it, it's it's a totally different dynamic because we try to treat her normally. I mean, she knows something's wrong with her, but I don't think she can grasp. But she doesn't self aware of why she does certain things, like. You know how you know, might know something's wrong with you and you can identify something's wrong with you and you're acting a certain way because of that. She does, I don't think she's self-aware of that yet. Well, yeah, at 11, it's kind of hard to, you know, make those evaluations. Yeah. Uh, but some people 11, can. You, some people know. I mean, in all situations, it's always like some people get it and some people don't. Some people mature faster or slower than others like you always got those kind of situations some people have some people are 38 trying to tell you what's wrong and can't tell you like i gave this example a couple of weeks ago on an episode where i'm me and my man is having a conversation about uh he's looking for a, like a girl a wife type situation and it was like well what are you looking for it's like i know what i'm looking for but what are you looking for i know what i'm looking for but he couldn't tell me what he was looking for so <laughs> that's not just a kid thing that's just a people thing where some people right. just can't even some people can't explain it, can't even express it and don't yeah, even they can't know articulate. how yeah, they can't articulate what it is that they're trying to trying to get out. They um, know what they want though. They know what they want. <laughs> they know they want something, but they just don't know what it is. Right. Sort of like um, sort of like when women eating uh food for dinner and what do you want for dinner? Oh yeah. Whatever's on your plate Sorry. is what they want. That, that's um, a different that's a different episode. Sorry. <laughs> Oh no, we got I got a little bit of that for you. Then we call it a tease of the business. I got a little bit of that for you. Um we're gonna do that in the get to know segment. That's the next segment. Um <laughs> this is something that I ask uh also with these episodes is what is it that the village can do to help with, with these situations? Because everybody who's not in the household doesn't understand what it's like on Wednesday at two o'clock in the afternoon and two o'clock in the morning. Because all of the situations are different. You could be everything's cool, like you said, to everything ain't cool. And now it's going to be everything ain't cool for the next hour. It might be 10 minutes. It might be the next three days. But what is it that the village doesn't understand and that the, that the village should understand to help with these situations? It's a, it's a uh, scripture I like to use in the Bible about judging. Don't judge. You don't know what's going on. Because we have a friend of a family who actually helps out with our oldest daughter since we got her, we adopted her because um, they've been with the family that long. She likes to insert her opinion sometimes of how we're raising our kids. And she doesn't have any kids. And they like to just say certain things to, um, and it kind of triggers me like I'm going to give you a story. I'm standing on the steps and my daughter's coming downstairs to try to go with the said individual. And me and my wife, we're trying to get her to be more assertive and to say certain things. If somebody's in your way, instead of trying to move past them, 
you can say something to say, hey, uh, hey, I'm here, like, excuse me or something. You know, trying to teach her manners, too. So I've been standing there, and I, I know she was behind me. My wife was, just, she was up there watching the situation, too, and she, uh, I think the woman was like, you know, Mass is trying to give it down. I'm like, I know. So Madison finally said it because we that's how we got her go, you know, trying to get her going. She said, excuse me. So I finally moved to the side, let her down. And she said something that sparked a conversation, like, well, we're trying to teach her to say excuse me or have more manners instead of just moving past people. And she kept putting her two cents in. Well, maybe she doesn't know how to do that. Well, she's going to learn because if we're not there around her, who's going to help her? Who's going to actually care enough to tell her, oh, she needs to do this? Or you know how cruel this world can be. It's it going to spark very an unforgiving. It, it, uh, it's going to spark an incident where, where if we're not there, she can't say, hey, I'm autistic. Nobody's going to care. Yeah, and she's black. The <laughs> The world is the world is not very empathetic these days. Uh, the person that? who doesn't have the person who doesn't have kids, um, <clears throat> giving parents an advice, what you do is you look them dead in the eye and you just say to them, "Copy." I don't need to argue oh. with you. Oh, I, I don't need to go back and forth with you. I don't need to explain myself to you because you have no idea what this is. <laughs> like. My niece, whenever people ask me how many kids I got, I got two daughters and a niece is what I always say. And my niece is, my niece will be 20, uh, like next week. Wow. <laughs> you just, you just ate yourself. I know, I mean, I know I'm old. Um, <laughs> but I always tell people like having her, here comes the 40 year old, having her <laughs> prepared me for having kids. People will always tell you, like, oh, it's different when they're yours. It's only different if you treat them that way. I've never treated her like anything other than my own, though. So, like, you can be in a situation where the difference is that the ones that you have will go home. But you can learn from them situations, but until it's you, until it's like she fell off the jungle gym and they're calling you, until it's they're not breathing correctly until like my wife is having my oldest daughter and we have to do an emergency C-section because the blood pressure is dropping. Until you're in that spot, you can't understand what this is. And if I know that you have never been in that spot, then it's nothing for us to discuss here. You can have your opinion. Everybody has opinions. The four year olds right. have opinions. <laughs> like, but that doesn't mean that I have to take these joints to her. I don't got to let these joints trigger me. I ain't got to let it do nothing to me. It just like I said, I would look you dead in your eyes and just go copy. Um, right now, like I'm not mad at her. It's just like she always has something me, to say, and she she thinks we treat Madison differently, which we do, because her behavior doesn't. She's big for her age. For her body, her body type is big for her age. She's bigger than the normal eleven year old, but her mind is younger than, or same, at the same level, uh, probably a little bit, just a little bit older than my four-year-old son. Mm -hmm. So you have to treat them a little differently and try to get them more aware and of certain things, not adult things, but as far as her age, like crossing the street, looking both ways, just certain things. What is, what's your proudest moment? Uh, what was the proudest uh, moment that you had as a dad dealing with your kids? Something very small, like me coming home from work a long day. I'm dead tired, and they're excited to see me. Nothing I feels better than want. Nothing that feels better than being wanted by your family. I used to tell my wife this. My oldest daughter at my old crib. You had to you open the door and then you gotta go up the steps to get it to the crib. And when the key would turn in the door, you can hear my daughter running down, like running across the damn like she would do it when, I, when my wife would be coming home. She would be like, Oh, mommy's home. But to hear that the feet run across the joint, yes, I completely understand. Um 
last join, last join on this. Uh, what is the advice that you would give anybody's parents that may be dealing with this situation or hasn't recognized that that's what this is yet? If you don't feel right, you feel something's wrong with your kid, your instincts are probably right. Just get them tested. So it's better to know than go through life wondering because you could get the help, get the proper help that they need for whatever situation that arises because nothing's more frustrated to try to figure out what's wrong with your kid, but you're not trying to get help for your kid. And practice patience. That is the hardest thing you could ever be, do. Because I'm one of the most patient people that I know. Humble brag. Um, and sometimes my patients get so, because, you know, life comes at you. You have to be it an waves. adult, a dad. <laughs> and, and sometimes you don't have the temperament to try to deal with something that's special like them and yeah yeah i'm one of the most impatient people that i know uh <laughs> so like i always tell the parents in these situations i commend you uh for being able to handle that and be able to deal with it uh i know it's a difficult situation i always tell people the wristbands that i wear are all mine except for the one for my niece who has autism um Okay, now we're going to switch it up and do the Get to Know segment. Get to Know sponsored by Custom Hustle is at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jerseys, jackets, sneakers, barber capes, pocketbooks, sunglasses, uh, T-shirts, sweatsuits, tracksuits, collared shirts, you name it, we got it. Everything's uh, available over there at Custom Hustle World. Can I, can I interrupt with that real quick? Yes, sir. Um, a few months ago, I bought some Custom Hustle Custom, those will be custom the, hustle the, sneakers. Those will be the CH ones. My man Dame, my man Dame, the first person to buy a pair of of sneaks from us. We do appreciate the business. We still have not received a photo of my man I, and the sneakers, but that's beside I, the point. I, I want to let you know I hate you. My feet hate you for those shoes because they are so comfortable. I put those. Yes. G, I man, I put them on and be like, shoot. I gotta go to work. I gotta take things. I gotta wear boots at work. I don't want to wear those. I want to wear my custom hustle shoes because I'm like my feet are happy. <laughs> the C- the like, CH one, the CH ones is like they like running shoes. They like you feel like you don't have nothing on your feet when you got those on. I wear, I look for those when I'm doing certain things. Like I have to run after my my son because he's a runaway um autistic kid. Found him around the corner one day. That's besides the point. That's another story. If you want to put it on today, I don't know. Um, but <laughs> I put those joints on and run after my kid. Copy that. I yes, Dame. I, I said <laughs> Dame the first person to buy a pair of uh, sneaks off me. The CH ones Dame has the green and black joints Dame got. But so again, we we can use a photo of you with the sneaks on Dame so that we can post that at Custom Hustle World. Let, let me get my face. Uh-huh. I'm I'm, I'm bringing <laughs> it out. You you'll see me one with us uh, probably next weekend. Copy that. Um, all right, this is to get to know now. Uh, I need you to finish this statement for me. My wife is excellent. I didn't, come, come. She's, excellent. she's just excellent. Oh, sorry, she's, you know, excellent she's, say, she's excellent, hardworking, loving, very beautiful, um, smart, intelligent. Those are two different things. Um, because you can be intelligent, not smart. Uh, yes, you can. Self aware. Um, fantastic. I, I just so many words and not Copy not enough it. words. Not not enough words for my wife. Uh, she she she's very patient. She dealt with me for I mean plus years. So all right, finish this one for me. The Lions will do what this season? Super Bowl. <laughs> no hesitation. I'm saying I'm putting in the universe. We were one half away, and I seen it coming too because, like, all last year, they could not play the second half. It's like the, they come out second half, forget how to play, forget how to call plays. It's just like so. I seen it happening, and I'm disappointed the way it happened, but at the same time, I'm still proud of them because thirty plus years of ineptitude from that organization and now you finally I think they finally got it right. Yeah, y'all been trash y'all been trash cans uh, for like I, I'm just gonna say God's about time. 
It said a broken I, I clock is right twice, maybe at least four times. But damn, Detroit. <laughs> I, I, I want to say this, though. I want to give you a confession of why I dislike the Dallas Cowboys. One, delusional fans. Delusional fans, not because we have the all-time leading rusher, the Dallas Cowboy, Emmitt Smith, and if it wasn't Barry Sanders, is that what the jealousy is about? Copy, I understand. No, 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 no. I gave Emmitt his number two spot at, no, number three, because, no. The all-time leading rusher is number one, I believe. I wonder why. If you're the all-time, if you're the all-time ours, leader, wouldn't that make you number one? I'm just uh, Because kidding. he decided to hang it up because he got tired of losing. I don't blame him. Um, but for the GOATs, Walter Payton, Jim Brown. 1A, 1B. You can do it with that. Um, Barry Sanders, then Emmitt Smith. Because um, he had an offensive line. we Detroit didn't. He got all those it yards. Called, it was called having a good GM. As you see now that Jerry Jones fired Jimmy, we haven't had a good GM since. <laughs> that, that's number two. That's my number two gripe. I dislike that owner. I don't like him either. And, and, and for that reason, because I actually used to like the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to. I like because I all had to like All intelligent people. All intelligent people do like the Dallas Cowboys. I'm making this hard to be on this podcast right now. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but after but after Jimmy Johnson got fired for for having a winning record. Um. It's almost like Jim Carwell when he got fired because they said nine and seven wasn't good enough, and we got Matt Patricia. Yeah, that was done. Um. So. That was done. Um. So, but I did used to like the Dallas Cowboys. Then that happened with Jimmy Johnson. I'm like, I got no respect for him. And he got a yes man. I got one more for you for get to know. If Dame back long, 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 long time ago, okay. <laughs> We're not talking currently. So, you know, if the missus is listening, I don't want to be throwing out her name just frivolously on the episode. But if she's listening, we're not talking about back when he knew you. It was before he knew you. She's a realist. <laughs> she no, she's a realist. I, I can actually, I can actually say that I can answer this truthfully without her getting upset. So I'm good. All right. So we talking young Dame. Dame is 23. He's in his prime. Hamstrings are still lucid. Okay. <laughs> Dame is planning a romantic evening. What is Dame making for his guest? Or is Dame ordering something out because Dame's not tight in the kitchen? What's the situation for us, Dame? Dame's going to macaroni and grill. Okay. Okay. I actually, this listen, this actually happened. Uh, 23, first time being on my own. I went to South Florida. I went to Fort Lauderdale. Me and my girl at the time took her out on night to evening to Miami Beach after we went to macaroni and grill. Had a nice time. Went to a uh, club and everything. Um, yeah. That now I will cook. I will cook something. I will pre- prepare so something. Is- I will pasta. It'll be something like pasta, like related. So that's my thing. That's why I go to. So you gonna go out for you? We gonna white or red sauce then? If you want white. pasta, white sauce. Okay. Copy that. Because we had a we had a fellow on a gentleman. I don't want to expose him and use his name. You can go back in the archives and check that out. My man said he get a platter from the corner store, maybe. So <laughs> I don't want to expose nobody though, you know. You, you listening and you would know who that who said that. All right, last segment of the show. This one is sponsored by H2H Cleaning. That is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. We do roof and plumbing, flooring, HVAC, remodeling, cleanups, cleanouts. Cut trees, trim grass, however you need any of those things. We're making them happen over there, H2H cleaning it only. If you make it worth my while, we will slide out to the D and get you just right. Uh, what do we need to know? Dane, what do we need to know? Any uh, perspectives you'd like to give us from maybe a fan, perhaps? Any conversations that we should join? You, the ball is yours. Man. Maybe a few games you can you know play. What? I, I don't had... know, Dane. You tell you us what? what do we I, need to I, know. I, I really don't know myself because what happened is I'm going to tell you my strengths and weaknesses. I, as we you know, converse through here now, I am looking for a more suitable partner. With um, I have a show called Fans Perspective on GFT Radio. Oh, and I haven't done it in a while because these are some things I just need to work on. Um, 
I can keep a conversation going, but I need some, I'm not comfortable enough. I know myself. Um, that's one of my weaknesses. I know that I probably need somebody to bounce things off of to keep things going and interesting. I can't, I'm not confident as in myself, like as we see, Willie Styles. He's very good at what he does. That's why I usually use him a lot to bounce I mean, things off. The brother off who of. didn't send us the link from last week. Yeah. Let's talk about that, him. What? <laughs> well, he would never. Oops. That's my guy, um, but then <laughs> left us left us left us hanging. I mean, put 57, I mean, put 57 topics in the joint set. I'm about to make it and then send it to nobody. But go ahead. What, what the thing is, I, I don't, <laughs> I'm actually an admin on that. I could have just jumped in, but I didn't know that he was still going to do it because he didn't say, hey. He, he, didn't, he didn't send out hey. the information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, I could just jump in, but I didn't know he still want to do it. I'm thinking something might have came up, like, because he is doing, he is very busy at the moment. They can put his business out there like that. But so I was like, he got that Lego right. collection going. Yeah, I know. We don't want to So <laughs> making that yeah. Lego Batman from scratch. Yeah, so, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I, I, so I am looking. I actually have something in mind. I have to get in contact with a couple of people. Um, I actually have a um, shameless plug with one of my one of boys. Um, he does a lot of Detroit Lions topics. Um. Uh, called the Lion Syndicate. It's all Lions, all talk all the time. Um so it's been real it's been real negative for the last 50 years. I got you. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> How many playoff games have y'all won on let oh sorry. So So all right man that was ever so <laughs> <laughs> and once the last time up to the conference like, oh shoot dang it. I mean we want to bring up old stuff. Why you wanna bring up old stuff nineteen fifty six championship? Um hey at least we <laughs> want something before we went in Neptune. <laughs> Before we die, thanks, Bobby Lane. God damn, Bobby Lane. Wow. Night train lane. <laughs> um, Dame, I appreciate you coming on, though, bro. That was episode Anytime, 150. Man. That was episode 152. Shouts out to the GFT Radio Network gang. We are out. I am hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>